Hey, your friend, Chris here from mylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. First things first, happy new year. We're in a brand new year of 2024, and I hope this next year is a fantastic one for you, for your family, your loved ones, anyone and anything that's important to you. Now, given that's the new year, this is typically the time of year, the season for setting goals, resolutions for personal improvement, just you know, anything you're trying to achieve, we typically set a resolution and try to stick to it. And I thought this week we could focus in on improving workflow within Logic Pro, specifically key commands. Now, I harp on key commands in just about every video. I always am pointing out which key I'm using to open which section of Logic Pro to enable which feature or setting. Key commands are your key, no pun intended, to getting the most out of this application. It it's just so much faster, so much easier to use X to open the mixer as opposed to mousing to the mixer button in the control bar and trying to, you know, remember where you have to go. Now, of course, there's a lot of key commands. There's many key commands in Logic Pro and can be hard to remember all of these key commands. So today I want to show you a feature of Logic Remote on the iPad and iPhone. If you own an iPad or iPhone, and it's the key command launcher. It's you can easily set up all your favorite key commands and then just press on the screen when you want to use them. And you then don't even have to remember any of these key commands. Now, of course, if you don't own an iPad or an iPhone, I have a special treat for you down in the description and I'll also mention it at the end of this video. Let's dig into it. All right, so on screen, we are going to juggle both Logic Remote on an iPad side by side with a project that I have open on my Mac. Logic Remote, hopefully you're familiar with this application for Logic Pro. It's a free application that allows you direct control and access to Logic Pro in a much more nuanced way than any MIDI controller could provide or control surface or anything else. For the most part, I'll use the trackpad of the smart keyboard folio that's connected to the iPad so you can see where I'm clicking, but I'll also make sure to do a long press with my fingers if I touch the screen directly. Right in the upper left-hand corner of Logic Remote is a menu that gives you all sorts of different views from smart controls to chord strips to live loops, step sequencer, the mixer, and then right towards the second to last is an option for key commands. And as you can see on screen, I have a variety of different key commands at the ready that I can just press right on these individual blocks to navigate through my project, for example, by marker, begin playback or stop playback of my project, toggle the cycle mode, as well as toggle software monitoring, low latency monitoring, and so much more. And I'm going to use my hand on the screen and I'm going to swipe because there are many, many different pages of key commands that you can have at the ready. So you could, you know, organize your key commands by live loops grid, the tracks area, organizing the key commands in whichever way that makes sense to you. Just think about it. Think about how many times perhaps you've navigated up to the control bar here and thought to yourself, oh, which, which menu am I looking for? Is it the mixer or is it the editor? Oh man, where was that one thing in the toolbar? Oh, which button's the toolbar? Oh, there it is. You know, so instead of navigating to the control bar over and over and over, you could of course use key commands, but if you're not familiar with the key commands or you just feel like it's really hard to remember each one of these key commands. Instead, you could use the key commands launcher in Logic Remote to do exactly this. So as you can see in the top row here of this first page of the key commands launcher, I've set up four different buttons in blue to show or hide the library, as well as the mixer, show hide the editor for whichever region's in focus. So obviously if we select a MIDI region here, we have the piano roll. If I select a pattern region, of course, we get the step sequencer. And if I had any audio in this project, I do. So we get the audio track editor. So let me close down the editor and then we could show hide the toolbar and so on and so forth, right? So I have show hide automation available to me. That's really helpful as well as show hide flex pitch and time. So what I'd like to do is help you customize the key commands launcher in Logic Remote so you can apply whichever key commands are most appropriate for your workflow that you prefer to use and don't want to have to remember. If we go up to the 
settings icon, the gear icon here in the upper right-hand corner of the application and click, there's an option called edit key commands. And once you click on that, doesn't look like much has happened, but actually we can edit, change, move around any one of these key commands on screen. So for example, if I select next upper cell or previous track, a key command, honestly, that I don't really think about using. If I click on this option, we can now choose from all these key commands or options right here or search for the key command. So for example, I'm thinking about the loop browser. I really like Apple loops. So I'm gonna type in loop right at the top. And if I just swipe across through this menu, I'm just using my trackpad, we can see, oh man, show hide loop browser. So I'll select that. From here, I could even customize the color for this button to launch this key command. So maybe I want to set it to purple. I don't have too many purples. And once I'm done, I can just click done. And there we go. So I can show hide the loop browser in Logic Pro. We go back to the gear icon, the settings, go down to edit key commands. We can also rearrange our key commands just by clicking, holding, and dragging onto another key command within this menu. So if I wanted to swap with the show hide toolbar, there you go. We've now swapped these two key commands. I'm actually going to go back and rearrange it because I like all the blue buttons together. I'm gonna click hold until the block sort of pops out like that and then drag it to the location that I wanna move this key command on screen. You can also do the same thing in terms of editing or rearranging or just removing a key command down here in the bottom section, which seems to be a reserve for playback functions. I think that makes the most sense. We have press rewind and forward so we can see the playhead hopping around on screen. <laughs> We can stop playback, begin recording, toggle the cycle mode. And I also included an undo button. You know, so let's say I delete this region by accident. I can press undo on Logic Remote to undo that step in Logic Pro. Really handy. So if you want to customize these as well, let's go right up to that settings button, add the key commands, and perhaps we decide, nah, I don't want this key command here. We can just remove it. Now we have an empty section to introduce a new key command. So perhaps we could add some sort of button that juggles all the windows so we could cycle through window views. Beautiful. Right, so that's how you can customize the key command launcher. And if you have an iPhone, if you have an iPad, you can use these features on both devices. It's really handy. So I'm using my hand to swipe through the different pages. And from here, I just really want to recommend a couple of key commands that I think are really helpful. So right in the upper left-hand corner, I have switch between live loops, grid, and tracks view. If you like to throw down ideas into the live loops grid and not really commit to it in the tracks area, or you know, you're just juggling between these two views, that's a very easy way to flip between them without having to think about the key commands, option L and option N and option B to see both side by side. You could just use this particular command on screen. Of course, we walk through show hide library, the mixer, the different editors, and you can even customize further. You could say just the step sequencer or just the piano roll, as well as the toolbar, which is at the top here on screen that provides helpful functions like no repeat, spot erase, split by playhead. And if you want to customize the control bar, don't forget you can right click or hold control and click to customize. And there are other actions that you can introduce and save as a default. Right, so we have show hide automation. I think that's really helpful. Show hide flex time. And if we just go down to our audio file here, we could say, let's switch this to polyphonic. And booyah, we can now see some flex time activity that we can customize. Of course, many of us are recording in Logic Pro, so we could have a button to toggle software monitoring off or on. Toggle auto input monitoring. For those of us working with another artist that likes to play along as you're trying to listen, I really like that function. There's also toggle low latency mode when you need to remove any sort of latency because you have a project that's ballooned in size and you just got to get one other idea down. And there is so much more. One I think that's especially helpful is the show hide quick help, which you can see in the inspector in the upper left-hand corner here on screen, which, you know, based on what you're pointing the cursor at, 
will give you information about what that function or feature is. And if you need more, you can just press command and forward slash to see even more information about that function on screen on your Mac. But don't forget, as well as if we go up to the upper left-hand corner here, there's the option for smart help. And this will take you to whatever it is that you're hovering your mouse on, right? So you can see it's updating on screen of my iPad, right? So there's not a whole lot you need to know about this function to immediately get going with launching key commands without having to remember them. I think it's really important to commit as many key commands as you can to memory because so many of them are so intuitive and simple to remember. For example, pressing P opens the piano roll, pressing A opens automation view in Logic Pro, show or hide automation. But I get it, not everyone can remember all these key commands. Well, for you, I actually have a PDF that I put together. I put together what I think are the 60 or 70 most common key commands that you're gonna use anytime you're in Logic Pro, and I organize them specifically by categories of functionality. So showing or hiding different sections of Logic Pro, recording, so on and so forth. And honestly, I spent a lot of time just working on the visual appeal and organization of it. So it's something inviting to look at. It's not just a list of 100 key commands. It's really built to be attractive to look at, easy to understand. And you can instantly download this key command PDF so you can print it or just have it on screen when you need it. All right, so I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, please subscribe to Why Logic Per Rules, as well as click on that link below to receive the free, the absolutely free key commands PDF that I've built for you. All right, I'll see you for more next week. Take care.